Hi, welcome. Let's take this displaced probability distribution question and see how to solve it. The question says, the random variable x is b open bracket 100, 0.03. What this means is that the random variable x follows a binomial probability distribution. The b represents binomial probability distribution. In the arguments, the 100 represents the number of trials, which is n. And then the 0 0.03 means the probability of success, which is p. Then the question says, probabilities. i. Probability that x is exactly 0. i. i. Probability that x is exactly 2. The Roman number 3. Probability that x is exactly 4. Using a. The binomial distribution. b. A proper approximation. And C, comment on your result in A and B. So let's see how to solve this together. So taking the first one, which is the binomial distribution. A, for binomial distribution, remember I told you that the first argument in the bracket is the number of trials, which is N. So N is equal to 100. And I told you that the second argument is the probability of success which is 0 0.03. So P, which is probability of success, equals 0 0.03. Now, when you know probability of success, you can easily find the probability of failure. We are taught that probability of success plus probability of failure should be equal to 1. So if that is the case, then probability of failure should be equal to 1 minus probability of success, isn't it? And also, probability of success should be equal to 1 minus probability of failure, isn't it? But here we know the probability of success and we want to find the probability of failure. So what do we do to do that? We say probability of failure, which is K, should be equal to 1 minus P, success. So that will be 1 minus 0 0.03. So 1 minus 0 0.03 will give us what? 0 0.97. So the probability of failure is 0 0.97. Then let's write the formula for binomial distribution. The binomial formula says that probability that x is exactly x should be equal to n combination x. We read this particular one as n combination x, okay, times probability of success exponent x times probability of failure exponent n minus x. Now, this n represents the number of trials. The x represents the number of success, which will be given in the particular question. Okay. And the p stands for probability of success. And q means probability of failure. So, when you look at this question, we know our n already, and then we know p and we know q. Remember I told you that x will be in the specific question you are solving. So let's solve i, 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 and i, i, i. So for Roman number 1, it says we should find the probability that x is exactly 0. So the probability that x is exactly 0 should be equal to number of trials, combination, number of success. So n, which is 100, combination x, which is 0. You know, the question says we should find the probability that x is exactly 0. So, anywhere we see x in the formula, we put 0 there. Times, what is the probability of success? 0 0.03, right? So, we substitute it there. Exponent x, which is 0. Then, times, what is our q? We got q, which is probability of failure, to be 0 0.97. So, we substitute it there as well. Okay. Then exponent n minus x. Our n is 100 minus our x, which is 0. Okay, so we simplify this to get a final answer. So probability that x is exactly 0 will be equal to 100 combination 0. When you enter 100 combination 0 on your calculator, to do that, first enter 100, then click on the shift key, and then click on the division key. Then 
you enter zero and press equal to two, you will get one. Okay. In fact, any number combination zero must give you one. Okay, it's one of the principles you can keep in mind. Any number combination zero is one. Then times zero point zero three exponent zero will also give you one. Any number exponent zero must give you one. Okay, that's another principle you can keep in mind. Okay, so 0 0.03 exponent 0 will give you 1. You can enter it on your calculator and see. Okay, times, now 100 minus 0 is 100. So 0 0.97 exponent 100 will give you 0 0.04755 in 5 decimal places. So, probability that x is exactly 0 will now be equal to 1 times 1 times 0 0.04755. It will remain 0 0.04755. Okay. So the final answer to Roman number 1 is 0 0.04755. You can leave it in four decimal places and that will be 0 0.0476. When you are leaving something in four decimal places, it means that after the decimal point, you should count four digits. So 1, 2, 3, 4. You stop here. But you check the next number after the fourth decimal place. If that number is more than four, you convert it to one and add it to the fourth decimal place. But if that number is four or less, you leave it that way. So if this five were to be four or less, in four decimal place it would be 0 0.0475. But because this fifth decimal place number is more than four, you can convert it to 1 and add it to this five. So that would be 0 0.0476. But you can leave your answer this way as well. So let's proceed to the next question. Roman number 2 says, we should find the probability that x is exactly 2. So probability that x is exactly 2 should be equal to number of trials, which is 100, combination 2. So this time around our x is 2. So anywhere we see x, we put 2 there times probability of success, which is 0 0.03, exponent x, which is 2, times probability of failure, exponent 100 minus 2, okay, n minus x, you know, our x is now 2. So, probability that x is exactly 2 will now be equal to, when you put 100 combination 2 on your calculator, check and see, Enter 100 on your calculator, then you click on Shift and Division key. You get combination, then enter 2 and press equal to. You will get 4950. Okay. Times. Then check 0 0.03 exponent 2. That will give you 0 0.0009. Okay. Times. 100 minus 2 is 98. So check 0 0.97 exponent 98. In four decimal places, it will give you 0 0.0505. So, probability that x is a value to will now be equal to. So, you can now enter this on your calculator. 4950 times 0 0.0009 times 0 0.0505. Multiply them together, you will get 0 0.225 in three decimal places. Apply these three you get 0 0.224975. But in four decimal places, if you should add 1 to 9, okay, it will be 10. So it's not possible to leave it that way. So you need to take the 1 to the 4. So that will make it 0 0.2250 or 0 0.225. Okay. You can punch the whole of this. The entire thing here, you can punch it too. Okay. When you put it on calculator, you will still get the same answer. This one, so you can punch the whole of this also on your calculator at once. As you can see, in three decimal places, it will give you 0.225. Okay. Then let's look at Roman number three. Roman number three says we should find the probability that x is exactly four. So probability that x is exactly 4 should be equal to number of times, which is 100, combination 4. This time around our x is 4, so we put 4 anywhere we see x. Times probability of success, which is 0 0.03, exponent x, 
And this time around, our x is 4, so we start to see 4 there. Okay, then times probability of failure, which is 0 0.97, exponent n, which is 100, minus our new x, which is 4. Okay, so probability that x is exactly 4 will now be equal to, when you check 100 combination 4 on your calculator, you will get 3,921,000. 200 times, then check 0 0.03 exponent 4. That will give you 0 0.000000081 times, then check 100 minus 4 is 96, right? So 0 0.97 exponent 96 will give you 0 0.0537. Please do not leave this one in four decimal places. It has a lot of zeros. If you should leave it in four decimal places, you will have 0 0.0000. And when you multiply it by the others, you will get zero. And this will make your final answer kind of wrong. Okay? So when you have this case, a situation where the zeros are many, please include the non-zero numbers when you are writing. In order not to get zero as the final answer. So probability that x is exactly 4 will not be equal to. So check 3,921,225 times 0 0.0000081 times 0 0.0537 on your calculator. When you enter it properly on your calculator, you get 0 0.1706 in four decimal places. You can also enter the whole of this on your calculator. In four decimal places, you get 0 0.1706. So this is the correct answer to Roman number 3 as well. So let's proceed to question B. For Poisson approximation, first let's recall the Poisson formula. The Poisson formula says, probability that x is exactly x should be equal to mu exponent x times e exponent negative mu divided by x factorial. This mu represents the mean. Then the x will be given in the question. Okay, that's the number of success. And then the, this e is realest number. It's a constant and it is approximately equal to 2.72. Okay, so this factorial you get it on calculator. So this means that to use causal approximation to solve this question, we need to find the mean first. Remember I told you that the x will be in the question. The e is realest number, which is a constant, and approximately equal to 2.72. That means we need to find the mean first. To compute the mean, mu should be equal to n times p. Number of trials times probability of success. So that will give us 100 times 0 0.03. So check 100 times 0 0.03 on your calculator. It will give you 3. So our mean is equal to 3. So now that we know our mean to be equal to 3, we can now solve Roman number 1 to Roman number 3. So let's take Roman number 1 first. Now Roman number 1 says you should find the probability that x is exactly 0. So that will be equal to, now the formula says mu exponent x. Remember, we got our mu to be equal to 3. But in Roman number 1, our x is going to be 0 because we are finding the probability that x is exactly 0. So anywhere you see x, you put 0 there. So that will give us mu, which is 3, exponent x, which is 0. Okay, times the U.S. number, E, exponent negative mu. You know, our mu is 3, so negative 3. All divided by x factorial. Since our x is 0, we write 0 factorial. So probability that x is exactly 0 will now be equal to. When you check 3 exponent 0, remember any number exponent 0 will give you 1. So 3 exponent 0 is 1. Times... Now, when you check the U.S. number, E exponent negative 3 on your calculator, 
Now, to get this VLS number on your calculator, click on the sheet key and then click on LM. It will give you E exponent. Then at the exponent, you enter negative 3 there. So that will give you 0 0.0497870. Eight three seven, but when you approximate it to about six decimal places, you get zero point zero four nine seven eight seven. So all divided by zero factorial should give you one. You can check it on your calculator. Enter zero first, then click on shift, and then the key under the mode key. Okay, you get factorial. So you click on it. So press equal to you get one okay so zero factorial will give you one okay so probability that x is exactly zero will now be equal to one times zero point zero four nine seven eight seven will give you the same thing it will give you zero point zero four nine seven eight seven and when you divide by one you will still get zero point zero four nine seven eight seven but you can approximate your final answer to four decimal places so that will be 0 0.0498. So let's look at Roman number 2. Roman number 2 says we should find the probability that x is exactly 2 using Poisson approximation. So that will be equal to. So this time around we are using the Poisson formula again. But anywhere we see x, we place 2 there. Okay. So that will be 3 exponent 2, which is x, times Vilas number exponent negative 3 all divided by now that our x is 2 then the denominator will be 2 factorial okay so probability that x is exactly 2 will now give us when you check 3 exponents on your calculator you get 9 okay times remember we already know what e exponent negative 3 is from here so we can just put it there so that will be 0 0.049787. Or divide by. Now, 2 factorial means 2 times 1. That's the meaning of 2 factorial. You can use your calculator. Enter 2 and click on shift. Then the key under the mode. You get factorial. Then you press equal to key. You get 2. 2 factorial means 2 times 1. And that will give you 2. So, probability that x is exactly 2 will now be equal to 1. So, when you put the whole of this on your calculator and you approximate it to 4 decimal places, you get 0 0.3240. So, let's look at Roman number 3. Roman number 3 says you should find the probability that x is exactly 4. So, probability that x is exactly 4 will be equal to. Now, this time around, anywhere we see x, we are putting 4 there. So, that will be equal to 3. Which is the mean exponent x, which is 4, times u less number exponent negative 3, all divided by 4 factorial. So, probability that x is exactly 4 will now be equal to. When you check 3 exponent 4 on your calculator, you get 81. Okay, times, since we know what u less number exponent negative 3 is already, you just put it there. Zero point 049787 or divide by 4 factorial. Number 4 factorial will be 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. You can use your calculator for it to get it straight. So that will give you 24. Okay. So probability that x is exactly 4 will now be equal to. You can put the whole of this on your calculator. When you put all this on your calculator and you approximate it to 4 decimal places, you will get 0 0.168. Zero. So that's the final answer to this also. So let's proceed to question C. But to answer question C, let's check the answers we got for uh, question A. So these were the answers we got for question A. Okay. Then for question B, these were the answers as well. When you compare the answers, you see that they are almost close to each other. But to make a comment on this, you need to know the condition for using the Poisson approximation for binomial distribution. And the condition is that the n, the number of trials, should be more than 20 or equal to 20. So when you look at this particular one, the number of trials is 100. So one condition has been met. Then the second condition is that 
the probability of success should be very small or 1 times p, that is the mean, should be less than or equal to 10. So in this particular one, our n times p, which is 100 times 0 0.03, was equal to 3, isn't it? And it is less than 10. So since this question meets the two conditions, we can comment that the Poisson distribution in question B is an effective or a good approximation to the binomial distribution in question A. Next time, we will take another question again and see how to solve it together. So do all to subscribe to the channel so that whenever I post important videos like this, you can have easy access to it. Okay, thank you.